This is Crash Course in Enterprise Java Beans 3 with Rational Application Developer for WebSphere. Part 4 of 9, Creating the Apache Derby Database. The next step in creating our blog website is to create the Apache Derby Database. In order to do this, we will browse to the Apache Derby folder. So start out in C Program Files IBM, double click SDP, and then run times, and then base v7 because we are using the version 7 of the Web3 application server, and then the folder labeled Derby. Our database will actually go in the databases folder, but we need to run the IJ tool. So open the bin folder and then embedded, then you'll see ij.bat. This IJ tool allows us to write SQL and execute it against the Apache Derby database. This will allow us to create our database and the table inside of it and manipulate any data that we need to. At this point, if you are not familiar with SQL, you may just want to type exactly what I'm typing and become familiar with it later. It is the structured query language the standard language that is used to interface with just about every database out there today, um, especially relational databases. And I believe it's an important tool to have. So for right now, we opened up our AJ IJ tool. And we're going to start by writing a connect command. Now, this connect command is a little bit misnamed. It will connect to our database, which doesn't yet exist but we're also going to use a create flag um, which will tell it to create the database and then connect to it. So we type connect a single quote and then jdbc colon derby colon databases slash ejb3 crash course and then a semicolon because that was our database and now we have any parameters we need and in this case we want to say create equals true close the single quote and close the semicolon. Now what this will do, so I'll switch back to this window real quick. If we come back to the Derby folder, inside bin is the IJ and other tools, and then there's a databases folder. Now the IJ tool is currently running within this main Derby folder here. So we have to specify databases slash EJV3 crash course. And that will create our database in this databases folder right here. We hit enter. It did so, and you can see the folder back there, created inside our databases folder. Now we want to create a table for our view counter enterprise Java bean. So we'll say create table, view counter. And in this IJ tool, you can hit enter to go down to the next line at any point. It will not execute anything until you type a semicolon and hit enter, at which point it'll type everything up to the previous semicolon. So to make things look a little nicer, I'll be hitting enter several times in order to put each separate concept on each line. So we will create our table view counter. We want one column to be ID. It'll be an integer. It'll be not null. And since this is in our our ID, we want it to be generated always as identity, which starts with one, start with one, and increment by one. We also want our value field. Value will be, of course, the number of views. Again, an integer and not null. And then we need to set a constraint. That's actually a special keyword. Constraint will not be a third column, but it's telling, it tells the Derby database that uh, our constraints apply. In this case, we're going to make a constraint called primary key, which is, of course, a primary key on the ID column. And again, if you're not familiar with SQL or databases, you may not know what primary key is. Um, for now, don't worry about it, but essentially a primary key establishes that this ID will label each row so that 
each row will have a unique ID and any row can be referenced by its ID and safely assume that the ID is not going to change. So you hit enter. It informs us that zero rows have been inserted, updated, deleted, but obviously we have created our table at this point and you can verify that by typing show tables with a semicolon. And you see there are many system tables and then at the very bottom an application table of view counter, which is what we just created. And if you even want to see the columns, you can select star from view counter. And you see that we have the ID column and the value column with zero rows. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert a row. So I want to insert into view counter. And I specify the columns that we're going to give it. In this case, only the value column. Again, we specified the ID as generated always as identity, starting with one and incrementing by one. So we can assume that the ID column will be generated. And in fact, if we try to specify it, since we specified that it is always generated, it will give us an error. So we give the value column a value of zero. We now have one row inserted. And if we select star from view counter again, we see that we have one row with an ID of one and a value of zero. That's all we needed this time. Make sure to type exit in semicolon. Do not simply minimize this window because right now this IJ tool has a lock on the database. And further along the line, if you leave this window open and you leave the lock on the database and then you try to run your application, you'll actually receive an error. And it's a it's not a very informative error, but um, it, it comes from the fact that the database is locked. So type exit with a semicolon and hit enter. The window is closed. You've now created your database, and in the next section, we will talk about the Java Persistence API and connecting your enterprise Java Bean to this newly created database.